the box seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Some awesome shots coming out of Kaikoura. Yes, what a magnificent two days they had there. Big thank you to Daryl Cribb and the Trackside team for providing us with those, Michael. You know you're close. You know you're very close when Kaikoura is run. I know this year's slightly different, two weeks out, but they had two magnificent weather days and awesome racing on the track. Hi to you. Yeah, hi, Greg. Big hi to everybody watching, whether it's here in New Zealand uh, or further afield, and some of our Australian visitors will be just that little bit more piqued, Gregory, about the New Zealand Cup Carnival because we could go close, and I don't say this lightly, and it's barrier draw dependent. We could go close to having an Australian favourite for the New Zealand Cup. Hard to believe on what we're just about to see from Akuta in the Kaikoura Cup, Gregory, but if he draws the second line and Swayze draws the front line, they're going to be awfully close to each of two, even with the bookies, about 2.5, Greg. Lots to discuss. I agree with you. There's a bit of a lull till cup time, but that lull has some pretty interesting things rolling through Friday night at Addington and rolling through the New Zealand Cup draw next Wednesday, which, Greg, could decide the race. Absolutely, it could, Michael. What about for you on your box seat? Brought to you by our stable of sponsors. We'll go back and have a look at the Kaikoura Cup from yesterday. Swayze sped around Menangle in a remarkable 247 for the 2400. Mystic Max is back in form for Michael Purden. Uh, we have the NZB Classic and Jimmy James Maguire. We'll head across the Tasman with Garrards. Preview some of the racing coming up this week, inclu including a very big night at Addington Raceway on Friday night. 12 races there. And we'll update you on the Katie Cox appeal. But let's go to the Alabar Kaikoura Cup. Yes, it was run over the 2400 metres yesterday. And Akuta, who was placed in the race last year, delivered this performance in front of a very big crowd. Kango, the defending champion to his outside. The Butchers going at Akuta. They couldn't get there, though. O Old Town Road, self-assured wider out. Crew to their inside, along with Mossdale Ben. Here's uh, Matt Cross to call them home. And then all the post-race discussion. It's Akuta's Kaikoura Cup. Akuta by two and a half. Beat Old Town Road and Krug. Third across was Mossdale Ben, then can go. Next in, self-assured from Heezus. Well, haven't you been having fun the last couple of weeks? Oh, it's just been phenomenal being able to drive a horse like Akuta. I'm just so grateful to Mark and the owners and obviously Dobby's legacy to be able to drive this horse. When you went round them, were you fully intentional to go to the lead, was that your plan, or when you got there, you thought, right, let's light the big boy up? Well, when I saw that Carter was in front, I knew that I'd probably have a good option of getting the lead. So I thought, instead of making a hard work, a certain part, I'd go to the lead and make them catch me. Liv, coming off the back, he was travelling peaches and cream. That must have been an awesome feeling about the 300 metre mark when you knew you had them covered. It was amazing. Like just turning for home, he just dropped the bit and was just jogging. And the minute I pulled the plug, he just found another deer, and he just did it real comfortable in the end. What do you reckon? Sit around the smoko table, have a word to Mark, see if he can leave you in the seat. What are your chances? <laughs> Not high. <laughs> well, you've had, you've had a lot of fun the last couple of weeks, and I know he's very proud of the way you've driven him, so well done. No, thank you very much. He looks right on track. Yeah, he, um, he went really well. I tell you what, that Akuta, that was a pretty good effort there. I don't know where he came from, but he came around with some authority, uh, and he sort of run away from us, so you've got to have a lot of respect for that run. It's going to be hard to beat come Cup Day, but I'm uh, pretty sure there'll be a lot of improvement from our guy. Yep, you've still got a Cup trial to go, and if he's sitting in a similar spot to what he was today, with those other couple of runs now under his belt, 
he, he, he's definitely a winning hope, isn't he? Well, 100%. You know, you, this track's pretty hard to make ground on, as you know, and especially against a good horse like him. So I was pretty happy with the way he got the line. He did sort of feel like halfway down the straight he'd blown out, but he stuck to his guns and held on for seconds. So, you know, for the, the runs he's had, he, he sort of hasn't done a lot. So you'd think he would really, really sharpen up off that. Carter, he continues to progress. Yeah, very, very happy with today. He's got the standing starts. Had to do quite a lot for that first lap. And yeah, he's having a still good flow, so he's still on first on him. Do you think he needs a cut trial now? Uh, before the race, I didn't think he did, but now he's, he might need one more, yeah. He's gone super again. He, he's gone super, Greg. Yeah, no, he had to do a bit of work there, and um, he stuck on really good and got beaten by three nice horses. What's the plan? Do you go to a cup trial? Does he need that man? I'd say, without speaking to mum and dad, I reckon probably straight to the cup, um, but we'll just reassess things in a couple of days. Great defence of his title. Yeah, no, I was really happy with him, you know. We were a little bit tardy early and got hung out for a while, and he stuck to his guns pretty good, you know. He only got caught late for, for fourth, so, no, happy. What about going forward, do you think Arn will get him in the cup trial or is he, is he getting pretty close? No, I think he's here mate, he's been to Aussie and had a trip around there and he's come over here mate, if he's not ready now he's never going to be ready, so as long as he gets out and does his best work for me on cup day we'll be real happy. Well the start was costly but he didn't go as good as he can. No, fair comment Greg, he, uh, he just scrambled away a little but you know we'd done no work to the thousand and just poked him up three wide down the back and you know his last furlong is a really tired horse so uh, yeah it's not like the old self assured. So great to get that inside post the Alabar Kaikoura Cup. Michael, there's a few things to unfold there. Let's start with Akuta though. He was simply awesome yesterday as he was at Ashburton and he quite rightly deserves his place at the top of the market. Very much so. Um, he is slowish away, which would be the only concern most punters will have because when you're taking short money in a New Zealand Cup, you want to see them in front. We'll talk about that and how that parlays into Swayze shortly. But he's better than these horses at the moment. So I think Old Town Road will improve. John Dickey said to me pre-race he was 85%. He looked 85%. But Akuta's better than Krug. Um, he's probably a little bit better than Old Town Road and I would expect that not to change much over the next two weeks. He's definitely better than the rest of them. It's impossible to make a case that anything he finished further back than third Greg can win. Self-assured is the question mark horse. Will he turn up in the cup? I guess we'll find out over the next few days. But it would be staggering to think he could be a factor in the cup the way he's going. Uh, and then you start saying, well, who wasn't there? So BD Joe wasn't there. He's had a little bit of a setback here. I think he'll go to the cup trial next week because he's not nommed for Addington on Friday. And Republican Party, who got close enough to a cooter, at Ashburton wasn't there either. He should probably win at Addington. Yes. And then he comes into play. So Aussies aside, we'll get to them later. Akuta, clear top pick, Greg. Then Old Town Road, uh, alongside a Krug, alongside a Republican Party. But do you really think they're going to beat him? And for me, the answer is no. And then you say, OK, the New Zealand horses, how are they going to beat him? Well, he doesn't look like he's going to gallop away. He's slow away. But again, it's not a disaster for him because the biggest performances of his career have been when he settled and then moved mid-race, as we saw there. So it's his cup to lose from the New Zealand point of view. We'll have a look at Swayze shortly and look at him. But one thing about the Australians, Greg, and I'm not sure they'll both come, but if Swayze wasn't in this race, it could be a very boring New Zealand Cup build-up because he would be getting into Lazarus odds. He'd be into a dollar forty or a dollar fifty. Not saying he would deserve to be because he doesn't quite have Lazarus manners, but he'd be getting that short, Greg, because I'm not sure many people watching this show would want to back any of the other New Zealand horses to beat him. No, correct. And his next win, or in fact his next payday, will see him go past a million dollars, and he has less than thirty starts. So he will not go to the Cup trial. He will just go straight into the cup now, uh, as I understand it. Uh, you mentioned the Aussies, and just on he's a sport too. I uh, spoke to Colin Phillippe. He, he wasn't that happy with his own drive, but he is happy the horse is going better. But he's a sit on the markers, three, four, the fence, top six finish would be an awesome result for him. Speaking of the Australians, let's head back to Sunday. This is the Battle of Bersheba, and this wasn't a battle at all, Michael. This is Swayze in front. 
247.5. That's a 152.3 mile rate over the 2400. The way he runs through the line here and beats Spirit of St. Louis, beats his stablemate Narano and our Money Rocks got past Spirit of St. Louis. And I spoke to Luke McCarthy. We'll talk about that shortly. This was an awesome performance from him on Sunday, Michael. Well, he might just turn up, Greg, and smash them. He might do what Steel Jaw did back in the 1980s. He might just roll to the front and he might win the New Zealand Cup by three lengths. He might win it by more. Uh, he might also not win the New Zealand Cup. <laughs> so there's a, there's a fair bit of stuff to get into with that. First of all, we'll talk about his performance there. Don't get too carried away with the times at Meningle because they went quicker uh, in the Eureka and if the winner of the Eureka was coming to the Cup, you wouldn't be saying it could win. And it was off the markers and it was on the markers. Menangle can do that to horses, but you got to trust your eye. And all of us saw the same thing. Very powerful, very strong. We know he can beat Leap to Fame when he gets in front of him. And Leap to Fame seems to be the measuring board for Akuta, even though Akuta is a better performant horse than Leap to Fame in the open class ranks. So then you say to yourself, well, what are the potential problems, Greg? And one is obviously a lack of standing starts. So here is the standing start last week. He's the horse obviously second in the shot. Spirit of St. Louis away first. He rolls around. No issues there, Greg. What that means in a standing start, I don't really know when there's only three horses. You see it a lot at the trials in the North Island here. Everything seems to be fine. How that extrapolates out to 10 horses off the front line, pushing and shoving, and almost invariably the New Zealand Cup start takes quite a while. How that all pans out for Cup Day, and of course, both him and Akuta have about a 33% chance of drawing the second line, which would change the market and maybe the result, Greg. So there's those little question marks about him. On that performance, if that version of Swayze turns up and he rolls to the front, it's his cup to lose. So we've got the New Zealand bunch in the cup, Swayze in the cup, and you've got an update on Spirit of St. Louis. Yeah, I spoke to Luke today. He he said they're going to get the vet to go over the horse uh, tomorrow, but he thought he raced a little bit tired. And he, he was in that trial, and they ran home, I think he said in about 25-3. So it was a very quick last quarter. And Jack Callahan, who drives him, just said he was just a little bit flat. He said at this stage, Michael, He's, he's going to press on. Um, he thinks that that might have just taken the edge off him. And yes, they went a fast time in the Besheba, but he thinks he'll be OK. And at this stage, the trip is still on. Well, they've got an option of the cup and also the free-for-all, yep. where he has very good gate speed. Uh, it'd be tempting to drive him really quiet in the cup and yep. try and beat some of them, but maybe not beat the two favourites and try and do anything extremely brave and maybe try and win the free-for-all. Of course, he has New Zealand connections. I want to come home. Yep. But I don't see him as a factor. He's going better than self, for sure, but I don't think either of them are going good enough to win the New Zealand Cup. And I think most people watching this, Greg, will now be in one of two camps, Australian or New Zealand parochial. Or financially, I think this will lead or that will lead. And that's entirely impossible to tell okay. until the well, barrier draw next week. Yep. And one big question I've got for you. Okay, so we're talking about 33% chance drawing the second row. We're also talking about a... 6% chance of drawing one or one the second row. Now, that could be a disaster for either horse. It could be. Um, one thing I've learned about standing starts is often things you think are good or bad just don't turn out to be either. Yep. It's just how it comes down to the horse. Uh, you wouldn't, wouldn't like barrier one for either of them, though, would you? No, you wouldn't. But it wouldn't change favouritism. For example, like if, if they both draw the front line, they'll relatively stick where they are now. Yeah. If one draws the second line, it'll enormously go out. Mm. And if one draws the front line, it would enormously come in. The best thing for the race would be them both drawing the front line or yeah. both drawing the second line. But it's great to have that real trans-Tasman conversation because we occasionally get it in Australia, but somehow we've ended up having virtually no trans-Tasman harness races anymore. So I think it's a really intriguing build-up. You can make really strong cases. I wouldn't be surprised if Akuta won the New Zealand Cup by three lengths, and I wouldn't be surprised if Swayze won the New Zealand Cup by three lengths. And I can barely remember a cup like that. It's rare you think one horse could dominate a cup, but there's actually two of them in the same race. 
Yep, dollar ninety the price about a cooter, three forty, three dollars, three twenty somewhere around there for Swayze Old Town Road, who was excellent. Six dollars. I spoke to John Dickey yesterday, and he said exactly where I thought he'd be, exactly what you wrote about Michael leading into the race. Um, he's really looking forward to uh, that cup trial just to finish him off uh, and have him bang on. Republican Party eleven dollars, and then you're out to Beatty Joe Krug seventeens, uh, and the rest One for you. If we're thinking Spirit of St. Louis may or may not come, yep. and we're thinking that self-assured's 50-50 to start, do you think there's a chance we might see less than 15 in the Cup? Well, that would take it down, say they both came out, that would take it down to about 17 left at this stage. So it's still a fairly good chance that it'd be 15. That just might not be the allocation of three ballots that you would normally see. So I, I still think there'll be 15 uh, at this stage. Of course, this week, Michael, we have Republican Party starting off 10 metres, taking on the likes of uh, Beach Ball, who's now with Brendan Hill. So Kevin Chapman is having an operation. He's having his hip replaced. So is now with Brendan Hill. Spoke to him about him today and he said, it's pretty good, this horse. He said, might not be quite ready this year, but he said he's pretty good. Uh, Manhattan resumes. She'll be in the big mares race on show day. Uh, Mighty Louie, one change who missed yesterday. And McAndrew Aviator, who's had a few problems, but Stephen Boyd said he was awesome in work on Saturday. So he needs to race well this week. Uh, to secure his spot, I suppose. He's got a spot in the race, but to give them the confidence to start him in the Cup. So that should be a good race this week. The Cup winner probably won't be there, but Republican Party is. So, yeah, looking well, forward. I can never remember, Greg, in the time I've followed New Zealand Cups, and I think I followed them first start when I was nine. I've never remembered a Cup where the Bowery draw was so crucial. So crucial. And particularly yep. to the market, because it may not decide the winner, but it's enormously going to decide the market. Uh, if one of those two horses draws the second line. Yep. Looking forward to uh, the build-up towards that. Right, let's get into the featured trot from Kaikoura yesterday. Mm. Here is Mystic Max sitting in the trail. Gee, he was good. Um, he needed to be, though. He needed to lift off a couple of average performances. And when you hear uh, from his owner and trainer, Michael Purden, you'll hear about some of the challenges there. Uh, in front was Artie by the Hill. Harold Smith going a great race. Oscar got it wrong around the back and uh, stormed home. But we'll hear more from the connections post-race. Mystic Max won it. Beat Harold Smith. Artie by the Hill close fourth between Oscar Bonavino. Great to have him back on track. Definitely, yeah. No, uh, it's good to see him back to his best today. What's been his issues? Because clearly his best form hasn't been seen in his last couple of starts. So what have you been working on? Look, um, it's not the horse's ability. It was more me as a trainer, you know, after those first couple of wins and his form derailed a bit. Just me learning to sort of train a free-for-all horse and uh, knowing how much fitter he's got to be this time around. And... Um, you know, the, his last couple of hit outs, I really stepped him up and to be honest, he, he was either going to go good or be legless. <laughs> yeah. Well, he went good and that is good. What do you do with him now leading into the Renwick Farms Dominion? Did you have a thought process post today? Uh, look, I, I probably will line him up on Cup Day in the Worthy Queen, 2,000 metre stand. He, he's a horse that uh, gets fat quite quickly, so I think a quick backup will do him good. Well, you've done a great job getting him back into winning form. Congratulations. Look forward to Cup Week. Thanks, Greg. Well, that was the real one. Yeah, it was, Greg. Um, you know, Michael's done a great job to, to get him back to where he was today and uh, still held my breath from the furlong, just wasn't quite comfortable and only really went for him the last sort of 10 strides and, yeah, he put his head out and got there. Yeah, it's good to have him back because he's a genuine free-for-all horse and that'll give his trainer and owner and, of course, uh, the horse a lot of confidence going into Cup Week. Yeah, for sure, you know, um, I'm not too sure if Michael's going to line up on the Tuesday or just go into the Dominion, but um, yeah, see, a couple more wee tweaks and just gets his gait 100%, you know, um, he's definitely one that, that can be competitive. Well, he's in a great vein of form, isn't he? Yeah, no, it was a great run and um, up against the big boys for the first time and he sort of um, held his own and just about got there, but Blair was too cunning and snuck up the inside and got us. <laughs> He is going well though, and that'll give you some confidence going forward to the Renwick Farms Dominion. Yeah, no, it is. It's good. You never know how they're going to go, and there's still a couple of good ones that were in the race this week, and um, Oscar Gallup and stuff. But you know, we sort of dream of being able to compete and maybe be able to get, sneak in there and get some money or something. But yeah. what do you do between now and then? Does he have a trial? Does he just go straight into the race? 
Um, well, if he's high enough in the rankings and we're, we're in the field, we'll probably just wait for the race and maybe look for a trial or, yeah, just sort of work it out closer to the time, see how he is. Well, he's not a genuine leader, but you had to take the front, didn't you? Yeah, I did, and uh, even into the back straight, he felt big and strong. I sort of just got in on that last bend and dropped the bit and couldn't quite get him to go, but uh, he was still all right. Um, thought he probably could have kicked a wee bit stronger in the straight, so uh, still improvement there. Uh, main thing was he stepped. Yeah, he did. He stepped really well too. What does that mean going forward to Cup Week? Is it straight into the Dominion from here? Yeah, 50-50 now. Probably I'd say yeah, just waiting for the Dominion and um, he might even have a trial in between, but uh, still got to lift him just a fraction there to get, get him there. That was another solid performance. Yeah, no, she came home really well, so um, we were all happy with that and we just need a bit of luck in the running and like she's not going to be far away because she's always making up the most ground sort of so yeah we just need a bit of luck and we'll be right there. Well he just didn't get that last bend. No it was his first time around Taitora and he just touched his knee which put him off for a couple of strides but he came down really quick and the way he ran home I was still wrapped with that. How refreshing Michael was it that Michael Purden who owns and trains this horse comes on and says you know what I've been mucking around and stuffing this up. I was learning about having a free-for-all horse. And, well, he's obviously found the key because he was much better yesterday. And that's code for I wasn't working him hard enough and Dad told me to work him hard enough. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> that's exactly what I heard when I saw that. A couple of things I took out of that. Mr. Um, he'll be a good horse in time. Yep. Um, secondly, I really like Sarah O'Reilly's sunglasses. They're cool, um, eh? Very mm. cool. Very happy mm. with those. I didn't want Olivia's necklace or that matter either. It wouldn't look as good on me. Um, I don't think Artie by the Hill could win right. one of the big races. He, he he looked like he was going to get there last year. I think he hasn't got a lot better. I think he's a very good horse. But I think Muscle Mountain and Bolt for Brilliance just tower over this crop. Apart from Oscar, and Oscar's problem is he needs to be driven cold, and the Dominion is an incredibly difficult race to be driven cold in because the field's always big and... Uh, you've, you've got a lot of horses going backwards at the 600. They can't keep up. So it's just a two-horse race, the Dominion. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Maybe one of them will gallop. Maybe something will be undone this week with Bolt for Brilliance on Friday night, Greg. But that was a really good support race full of horses who were really good support horses. And Oscar Bonavina showed us once again, Greg, how hard it is to come off a handicap at Kaikoura, which raises the question, should open-class races at Kaikoura have handicaps? I know... He got into the field, but yeah, it's just too tough. So yeah, yeah lots well, of it's to... proved too tough in the age pace as well. So it just shows you how hard it is to do uh, around there. Okay, so that two fifty appear at this stage. You talked about the barrier draw being crucial before. We know at this stage where Muscle Mountain will be drawing, so it's a very good chance Bolt for Brilliance is going to land in front of them. So two fifty each of those two, and then eight dollars Oscar. Well, most importantly, I would presume I haven't looked into it in depth. But I'll presume there's two or three horses unruly in the trial. Yes. So yeah. then you've got three horses who have to be on the second line, and then you can say you've got 12 other starters. Mm. Well, that means Bolt for Brilliance is... It's a great chance. 10 chances out of 12 of being on the <laughs> yeah. front line. Yeah. Uh, and with this being a, an, uh, a crop with a lot of unevenness in it, those two so dominant, three or four others, then a big bunch, if he's on the front line, and if everything goes evenly, we're just trying to help you out here, punters, then, Greg, not many of these horses are going to park him out in a, in a Dominion. No. Um, in saying that, Muscle Mountain was able to lead a race two starts ago, starting from 20 metres behind. So standing starts are very quirky things, but yes, if you're looking to have a bet, there's more chance Bolt for Brilliance will have tactical advantage in that race than there is Muscle Mountain will have tactical advantage. I tell you what, he's very pleased there's a race for him this week, Michael, because there was only about four nominations for a long time. Eurocash came in, which... Tony Hurley, he might want to drop a dozen beers around to the Hope Camp because he might not have got a run this week, which I believe would have been absolutely crucial. Uh, also with the race, Nazareth, I Dream of Jeannie, and Smoke and Bandar. It won't just be a picnic for Bolt for Brilliance, Michael, because he was so good in that mile race, and he gets a 30-metre head start on Friday night. Well, that's, that's the ironic thing about betting into the Dominion. Smoking Bandar gets 30 metres off a horse he might draw behind in the Dominion yeah. two weeks later. So it's it, it, that's the, the thing about the Dominion. It's so 
advantageous for the best horses. And there's no coincidence, that's why so many of the great horses have won several of them. You know, the Lyle Creeks and the Taker Moments. Even back in the days when there were 10 metre handicaps, they weren't a big enough deal for the trotters. The gap between the best trotter and the 15th best trotter in the company, a country is always way bigger than the gap between the paces at the same level, Greg. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing how it all unfolds, but yeah, it's going to need to be something pretty bizarre to happen in the next two weeks. You asked me the question, for you, 17 days out from the Dominion, who would you prefer to be on? I still think Muscle Mountain. I still think he's got so many strings to his bow, but particularly his speed. Um, and he's had a number of races in the last nine months that Bolt for Brilliance hasn't had. I'm not going to underestimate Tony Hurley, but at this stage, Michael, I'll be with Muscle Mountain. New Zealand Bloodstock Aged Pace was the third of the features, the final race of the carnival there, and I'll tell you some figures very shortly uh, from the two days. Here is Jimmy James Maguire. Ricky May doesn't own too many, but as you would have read on Michael Guerin's article, he part owns this one. Holds off Leicester, does it in great style. I got him briefly as he was driving the horse back to the stables, and yeah, this gutsy little horse got the business done. Jimmy James Maguire won it. Jimmy James Maguire beat Leicester. I fancy Bark might have nabbed anything goes for third. Congratulations, Ricky. He really deserved that. Yeah, no, he's been going really great. If anyone's been watching how good he's been going, so has for a long time, but he's just got better this year. To step, get the front, you're always going to stay there once you got there, and it was a good battle up the straight with Leicester, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I actually thought he could be the hardest to beat before the race, because it's been going super good races with a good run, you know. Great to have those colours of Benny Hills on again and winning a big race, mate. Congratulations. No, absolutely right. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, and a big thrill for him, uh, not only to be driving the horse, but part owning it as uh, well, Michael. Uh, he was really good, wasn't he? Jimmy James Aguirre at his previous start behind Franco uh, Sinatra. Um, and on that form, gee, going into this race, finding the front round Kai Cora, he was always going to be hard to beat. I, I think he's going to end up an open class this horse, but um, speaking with Brendan Hill, he's looking forward to uh, him just starting in a class race during Cup Week, and he's not in any hurry with him. No, I agree with you. I think he went up in open class. Uh, very tough little horse, well-mannered. Um, he's obviously been placed in a Methvin Cup, which is close enough to open class. And look, well done to Brendan and also to his young son, Seth, who we saw on trackside. Well, first time I've seen him on trackside. And he took the horse up to Kaikoura and then obviously working with Dad now. So that's really cool. Uh, good to see that Hill dynasty um, improving. Just a question for you. Did... Did you get dressed in a dark caravan or something? Wearing that cap with that shirt, like it looked mm, like. It looked no, like, I'll, I'll give you a wee pit. You look uh, like an uncle who had gone to like the Michael, school fair and was running the chocolate wheel. It'd what be fair to say we've, we've had this discussion before. I'm quite follically challenged, and no. it was hot. There was a lot of sun, and I thought to myself, mm, I'm not looking forward to getting in the shower tonight when you, yeah, get the hot water on your head, and yeah. Mm. So I went with that. Is that okay? There's no other hats in the world. No, it was a Kaikoura hat that they gave me. Hey, speaking of them, Michael, gee, mm. they had a good couple of days. They did a million dollars the first day, off course, as we get off that discussion. Maybe they can buy some new hats. Uh, 1.46 they did on the second day, so eight races into nine races. So that, that is terrific, you know, two and a half millions over those two days, and the quality of horse, particularly on the second day, was enhanced dramatically. So Also, yeah. they had a couple of upsets, Greg. Like yep. anything goes gets beat and obviously Oscar and, and Artie by the hill get beat. That's important because turnover is one factor, but yep. they've got to win. Uh, the GBR needs was to be good. was about 19% on both yep. days. Exactly. That's, there, that's so. the crucial component. Yep. You have eight races with 10 million bet on them. And if all I'm the here for you, Michael. Win, it's I've a disaster. I've got all the stats, mate. I've Thank you. Stats. It's good. And a hat. Yeah, you'd be happy with that. Um, find someone you hate and give them that hat. They can yeah, win I'll I, I tell you something that did almost look the same colour of my hat was this. Here is... A lobster eating a lobster. You know who that is, Michael? That, that is, is it's, that's one of the AJ? great photographers in world racing, AJ. AJ Berry. Have a look at him. Yeah. You know how he got that, Michael? He went out to the owner's tent and they said, who are you? He said, I won the previous race and I haven't got my crayfish. And they gave him one and he took it back. And that's why they took that photo. Mm. But as you know, viewers of our sister show, Wayne, would know I'm a fan of the mini pie. So that is <laughs> that, that has inspired me to level. go for something to eat after <laughs> this. But, and well done to Kai Kura. Well done to everybody involved in the coverage. It was a lot of fun. It's weird having that little break now, like that two-week break, and you could lose momentum because of the Melbourne Cup and all the cool things that are happening in the other codes with the Golden Eagle. 
but Addington Friday into the cup draw and the cup trials will make it just boiling enough away, Greg. I reckon we're in for an enormous cup week, uh, and I reckon the turnover should be absolutely huge because we're getting those Australian eyeballs there, and Sky Australia is going to take extensive previews during the carnival, and that's crucial. Yes. Sky Australia and Sky One coverage is crucial to driving Australians to have a bet. Yep. Um, the scene is set really nicely, but one thing we both know, leading into New Zealand Cups, Greg, there's bound to be something unusual happen in the next 14 days, but particularly even the next eight with the races Friday, the barrier draws and the cup trials. Yep, absolutely. Uh, now you took the mick a wee bit out of my dress attire there yesterday. Well, taking the mick also was one David Butcher. You saw him pop up behind his son, Zach, while he was trying to be interviewed. And then when I interviewed him, he did this as we go to our first break. That was a pretty fair defence of his title. Blah, blah, blah. Welcome back into your box seat. Yes, brought to you by our stable of sponsors, one of which is Garrards. They sponsor the New Zealand Derby, which is Grand Prix Day. Get your tickets at addington.co.nz for those. But let's head to the big events that happened over the weekend. We kick things off with uh, She's Bella getting the business done in the gold bracelet. Early burn here, Michael. Good old battle it was with uh, She's a Wish, I think it is, in front at the moment. Gets to the outside for Dylan Ferguson. Uh, she's always been very talented. Fourth win in her career, and she got it done in the Elder Baron Park gold bracelet. Yeah, this was sort of a support race, um, obviously, for the girls. Um, for the derby, we're going to see shortly. And look, smart move to not go to the derby. It turned into be a very punishing race. She's probably an open-class trotter, Greg. I think she, she likes it when the speed is on. And she's, she's a very good staying mare. And let's not forget, we now have some mares races for our trotters heading forward. So, yep, she'll make her way with Love Me Too into open class for the Rogers and Ferguson team. The Brecon Farms trotting performance of the week is a Brecon Farms trotter. Uh, we go to the Redwood, which the Kiwis have had really good success in the past. Greg Sugar's in the bike for Mark and Nathan Purden. Uh, this uh, is at Group 2 level, and, well, she's bred to be good, Michael, when she is. Yeah, and the key to this race is it's a standing start, which... <laughs> There's not many standing start two-year-old trotting races in Australasia. This is one of them. Greg Sugars is now becoming one of the go-to horse people for New Zealanders. They want him and Jess to look after their horses. They want Greg to drive them because he's so good. And he just got this horse away, got to the front, didn't panic. Um, one thing he does, Greg Sugars, which a lot of other Australian drivers don't do, a lot of them open them up too far from home and they can't conserve their energy and then the horses don't learn how to control themselves in better races. Greg doesn't do that. Greg's a driver, he's happy to go that third quarter a little bit quick, which is, yeah, everybody does it these days, but he holds on to them in the home straight. Now, I, I think Greg is a wonderful fit for New Zealand drivers, and with the news last week that his good mate Josh Dickey and his partner Sammy Kilgour are returning home, I think Greg's going to be the absolute go-to man in Victoria for many of the New Zealanders, Greg, as is Luke and Belinda McCarthy for many of the New Zealanders uh, in New South Wales when they head there. All right, you mentioned Love Me Too before. It was the Hara de Trotters trotting derby there at Maryborough on Sunday. And here's a pacing bred trotter getting the business done by betting line, not as promised in the Vic trotting derby. Uh, good performance. There was a lot of speed. You see Love Me Too uh, dropping out there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the favourite, other favourite, London to a brick galloping in behind it too. But... This horse was very, very good, not as promised, and there's been some interest, Michael, in coming over here for our trotting derby. Yeah, he's a, a Queensland-based horse, which is really rare for their trotting gate, and I'm glad the gate is starting to rebuild in that state. We saw in our good friend Brittany Graham have success getting to an Inter-Dominion final with Majestic Harry. It's really important, Greg, to have lots of states involved in the trots and not just Victoria. So it's, it's growing back in New South Wales, and now there's at least some depth in Queensland, so that's really good. They just went a little bit too hard. Um, and often you see with those trotting horses, but probably all 
three-year-olds, really, Greg, once you get to 2,700 metres and you go too hard, they punch her really hard. And that was just one of those races. It just suited the horses swooping into the race. Probably not a bad crop. I think there's probably four or five horses there, Greg, who will end up in open class, even though the leap from age group trotting to open class trotting can be quite a big one. All right, some big races coming up this weekend. The Mayor's Race, $150,000 Queen of the Pacific. Give me your insight here because the barrier draws have played a big part. Probably suit the uh, the former New Zealand horse, Brave View Kelly, who Jack Trainer now has. It has very good gait speed. It was slightly okay-ish, not great, in a free-for-all at Menangle two starts ago. Oh, so last start, two weeks ago. But it possibly gets to the marker pegs. But then you've got two really high-class mares. We know in Cypher, she won, of course, um, the Eureka. And we know ladies in red who went there and won last week and needed her fresh up run when second. So ladies in red's the best horse in the race, but it's a distance race, again, 2,700. So whether she's as fit as Brave View Kelly or in Cypher is doubtful. Interesting betting race, Greg. I haven't seen the market for it yet. But ladies in red might just have to take her luck. She might just need to sit back, maybe come around and sit parked at the bell, which is an awfully hard way to win. She probably still will, but I'm not sure, Greg, I'll be taking normal ladies in red odds about her to find out. Really good race earlier in the programme. Act now, Victoria Cup winner against Catch a Wave, who was again odd last week. He's turning into a very odd horse, Catch a Wave, a very talented but odd horse, and better eclipse. Uh, they go around in the four and five year old championship there. So some really good racing out of Melton this week. After a cracker day on Sunday, we mentioned Swayze before, Greg, there were some great racing breeders, challenge racing yeah, there coming was. out of New South Wales. So they've had a really strong last couple of months and they'll now pass it back into us for our next month before we pass it back to them for the Inter-Dominion. Yeah, well, in the free-for-all, we watched uh, Mac Da Vinci winning last week. Uh, takes on, on home. my name is Jeff, who comes out of the Vic Cup, of course, uh, even there on uh, Saturday night. Right, back to the domestic programme, and we go to Alexandra Park. Couple to preview. Here's Fernley Cash beating a really good field, including uh, the two-time New Zealand Cup winner in uh, copy there. Takes his place this week at Alexandra Park. Uh, looking forward to seeing him. He has to start off 20 metres. Simply Sam's in there, who was in this race, getting up on the inside as well. Frankie Major and Magic Four off the front. Don't Stop Me Now is developing into quite a nice three-year-old, Michael. Well, I think a lot of these races usually, Gregory, um, come down to manners and tempo. If the leaders step and decide to not wait for you off 20 metres, you usually can't win unless you copy that. You know, one of those good open class horses can do it, but often they just run you off your feet. Um, if they slow up in the middle stages and go middle half and three, you can get around and often the best horse will win the race. Um, Don't Stop Me Now is a pretty good horse. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a horse who goes on with the job, but Fernley Cash is semi-open class. So a lot's going to depend on the intent of everybody involved in those races, Greg. For years, they've been that way, and very good horses have been beaten off handicaps in these races by horses you wouldn't think were in the same class. All right, another one I wanted to preview with you was this horse 2IC, who's just been going great since resuming. Four runs, hasn't been able to win yet. Coming wide there for co-trainer Logan Hollis. Andre Potama picks up the drive this week. Uh, Logan's spending plenty of time uh, here in the south and wouldn't need to lift much. To the second row, I reckon it'd be a good draw for it, Michael. Um, there's a couple of others there off the front. Mr President, Lou Baby... No, I reckon he'll win. I reckon he'll be very hard to beat in race number five. He ran sixth in Merlin's Derby back in March 24th, so he's a genuine proper horse. Um, and he hasn't had much luck since. Um, I, I like a horse in this race, not particularly for this race, but it will win races shortly. A horse called Mr President. Yep. Had no luck fresh up Cambridge last week, got parked out, nothing went right for it. But it will win races shortly, and it could even win this race. Just on Logan Hollis and Shane Robertson, what a remarkable record they are now developing. They had a fresh up two-year-old winner last week called Minji, named after yep. the, the famous female golfer. And that's of their last six individual two, uh, winners. So of the last six horses they had who actually won a race, five of them have been two-year-olds. Yeah. Well, I would struggle to suggest as many stables in New Zealand have ever had that sort of record. Now, obviously, they sell a lot of their older horses, and they don't have a lot of older horses to compare them with. But, gee, they can train a two-year-old. And they don't get the expensive ones, Greg. They don't get the $100,000 juveniles. 
um, they are developing into a, a real nursery. Couple of those horses I've got around them, the owners want to keep them. And they told me, for our viewers, one called Christopher Dance is the one to follow. He might be the good He mentioned one. that. He yeah. said that to me at Kaikoura, actually. So yeah. I was looking forward to that one uh, stepping out, Michael, and now the nation knows. And, of course, they've got Hawkeye Pierce going around at Addington Raceway on Friday night, which 12 races they're going to have there. Let's preview a couple of those. Confessional, awesome. Really good performance uh, in the Hambletonian. Very brave performance. Uh, wouldn't need to lift much of this run, Michael, uh, to be winning pre-barrier draw as we talk about it today. Yeah, and the good thing about Paul's horses is the barrier draws don't tend to bother them too much. Often they settle and then they get involved mid-race, a little bit like the All-Stars often do. Um, beaten by a fitter horse here and isolate down the outside. I think it's going to win the New Zealand Trotting Derby if you ran it tomorrow, confessional. They're not running it tomorrow, Greg. They're running on Friday night. But these good three-year-old trotters um, tend to be a bit better than most of the age group horses when they drop back to the grades. Yep, will be extremely hard to beat, as will this horse, Franco Sinatra. Now, this form's been franked, hasn't it? Because Jimmy James Maguire runs second here, Michael, and he's got an awesome Addington record, has Franco Sinatra. That's him right on the outside. You just don't see that these days at Addington too often, do you? He was never going to win this race, never. Down the back, he was three wide, four wide, tail up in the air, which everybody hates. And you just thought, look at this. And he just kept on coming. I would suggest he'll go close enough to getting through to open class on that sort of time and that sort of performance. So, look, I thought, Greg, this Friday night's meeting was a beauty because there's races like the two we just mentioned, or horses in races. And there's four or five viewing horses. Like, I'll turn the television on, although my television's on tracks so I've pretty much all day anyway. But I'll turn it on to watch Bowl for Brilliance. And at the moment, I'd turn it on to watch Mantra Blue. And I would also turn it on to watch Ohoka Connor. So all of those horses are turning up, Greg, with these Cup Day races around the corner. And they're all horses here. You go, hey, I would love to see how this goes. So that Friday meeting, which could have been a real lull, Greg, is actually going to be a really intriguing strength for the industry this week. Yep, absolutely it is. So just to give you an update of where our box seats will be, Michael, next Monday evening we'll film uh, our final box seat leading into Cup Week and then we'll have our regular preview done on Sunday morning, which will play out uh, later probably on Sunday night and then multiple times leading into the Tuesday. So, so by, sun by Sunday morning, how early are we talking? Uh, we'll be recording, Michael, about 9 o'clock. 9.30. So set your alarm, Michael. Not a big Look, night the night before for you. It's 50-50, mm. I'll be there. 50-50. Uh, hey, if, <laughs> if, if, if I don't make it, enjoy yourself. Yeah, I will do. Don't worry about that. The 12 races, possibly 13, on IRT New Zealand Cup Day will be well and truly worth previewing. I think I could pretty much do it on my own. Short break for us here on your box seat. On the other side, Michael and I will wrap it up. We'll give you another opportunity to win uh, with Entain and get to Grand Prix Day on the 10th of December and we'll update you on the Katie Cox appeal. In your home straight, in your box seat, yes, brought to you by our stable of sponsors, many of whom have got behind this, the Katie Cox Appeal. We've got the Melbourne Cup Day fundraiser, 20 tables gone, still some tables available. We probably will shut it off Friday, though. 1,200 plus GST, includes a punters club ticket, where all the proceeds will go to Katie anyway. Uh, you can contact me on the Gmail there, gregoracing1 at gmail.com, or just call the office. We've had some enormous support from the industry uh, through uh, auction items and some of those, Michael, including Harness Racing Australia, Andrew Kelly yesterday at Kaikoura, get this, two tickets to the Eureka next year, including airfares, accommodation and two seats in the Chairman's Lounge. Oh. Now, at an auction, that might go for a couple of dollars. We've got the IRT uh, flight. We've got gear from Cavalier Trotting Products. Uh, Garrard's dropped off a set of harness today worth about eleven or twelve hundred. Richard Terence May gave me two ton of barley, Michael. That'd look good in Parnell. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'd do with two ton of barley. I think mm. I'll swap that for the tickets to the Eureka. But uh, <laughs> well done to everybody involved, and and so we should. 
Uh, one of our people is not the best at the moment. So Katie, we're all thinking of you. If anybody else has anything they can do to, to help out with Greg and this fantastic lunch and get along to it. T take some time off. We all spend too much time working. Go to the Melbourne Cup at Addington. Enjoy yourself. Have a couple of jars. Don't drive the car. Uh, and bid. And bid money you can't afford to bid because it's important. Yeah. And you can work it out next week. Uh, there is a race form sub. I'm just looking at some of the other stuff I've got here. Uh, Majestic have given a, a voucher, $500 voucher, to get your horse anywhere in the country. Uh, we talked last week about the 2% in Spirit of St. Louis if he comes for the Cup, the 10% lifetime in Levi, a uh, Mark Cooler service fee, uh, a couple of uh, dental vouchers for the local dentist here in Christchurch. There's so many things there for the harness people, Michael, and uh, so many of them are going along that the auctioneer which is me, and uh, Stevie Golding will have a bit of fun getting rid of a lot of this stuff, Mick. So uh, the big ticket items we're going to put on Harness Racing New Zealand, they'll be up by Friday, and you'll have till Monday to make uh, a bid before the day. And obviously if you can't be there um, and it's the highest bid, you will be able to uh, to get yourself uh, I've got some an of idea. those. Yes, Michael, what have you, you got? How about you sign that stupid red hat and uh, and put it up for auction? <laughs> well, I'll pay I'll a bid from you. I'll pay a hundred dollars to buy it right now. I got a hundred here. And I'll I got burn it. I've got a hundred. And I'll burn it so you never wear it again. Yeah, well, if you can burn it and play it on this show, that may well be the most watched thing. Any, you hated any, the red hat, didn't you? Any, Did it just any, not match my eyes, or <sighs> seriously, it's better than the wraparound sunglasses. I'll give it. <laughs> Right, moving from that, <laughs> let's give you an opportunity uh, to be at Grand Prix Day where Michael may well uh, burn the hat that day. Who won last year's Kaikoura Aged Pace? That would be a bit of humour because we're going to draw this on IRT New Zealand Cup Day. Entries to box seat NZ at gmail.com. One entry per person per week. We're getting pretty close to this being shut off. There's already a couple of hundred entries in there. And... I will, over the weekend, draw out, in time, TAB, have given us uh, a whole lot of entrance tickets, Michael, for those who have entered the competition. So uh, $50 ahead it is. Uh, go to addington.co.nz. If you're not lucky enough to win one of the uh, giveaways we'll give out next week. Um, no ticket sales, Michael. So you cannot come to the gate on the day and pay to get in. You need to pre-purchase your ticket. Is that Cup, so, day, cup day or Grand Prix Day? That's cup sorry, day. cup day. Yep. So okay, so just as someone's watching the show yep. and they want to go to the cup, any hospo left and go back for the whole thing again. If the, there is two people want to watch this and come have a drink and just enjoy themselves, yep. do they have to pre-buy the ticket? Yes, they do. To get in and ZM on the green, which is the old Lindale lawn, that's eighty percent sold. So there's still a few tickets there. Fashion marquee, gone burger. Uh, you can basically only get. Uh, general admittance tickets now. So they're $50, go to addington.co.nz, but you have to buy before you go. So you can't turn up on the day and try and get in. Uh, in the past, it's been pretty much sold out. There's still a few tickets there for the GA. How, how many people will go, do you think? Like, what, What's the number Addington cap this at? Is it 15 or it's is it about, up to 20? It's, it's about 15. 15, okay. maybe closer cool. to 16. It's so, going to be great. Um, yep, no, it's going to be enormous. And obviously the Australian interest is as big as it's ever been uh, with the two horses potentially being here. So, um, so hold on. We're, we're going to Australian viewers, Greg. Can they buy tickets? Because they don't want yep. to fly here and not they be They just go to addington.co.nz. Uh, Michael, I need to talk to you about some of the suspensions. Uh, from Kaikoura. John Dunn, out for three days. He won't be seen until Cup Week. We've already got Mark Purden on the sideline. Corbin Newbin, who works for them, got suspended yesterday as well, but he'll drive at Addington this week. He's out for Cup Week. Paul Nairn, suspended for Cup Week. So no drives for P Nairn during Cup Week. Uh, and Robbie Holmes is out until Cup Week. He gets to drive. He's back on the 10th as well. So if you want uh, the How sideline, many of those were whip, whip charges? Most of them were whip charges. I think yeah, Corbin's look, was not a whip charge. But as so, as someone were. who does both codes, Greg, this is a huge problem for the Gallopers. This is going to start affecting turnover and affecting turnover at carnivals and there's nothing we can do about it. Now, the industry is really small and no one wants to see horses beat up on and I'm the first person to hate that, but no one's beating up on these horses. I watch it all the time. It doesn't happen in either code. And if we keep suspending our best jockeys and best drivers for our biggest carnivals, well, we're just shooting ourselves in the foot. There's got to be a better way. I'm not saying I know all, but I know this is going to cost us money. And that's as a whole industry and considering we're supposed to all work together, 
the intent of these rules is not what is happening. This isn't supposed to be, you're supposed to hit at six, you hit at seven, therefore you can't drive in the New Zealand Cup. That's just nonsensical. Now, whether you give them extended fines, bigger fines, closer to group ones, but anybody losing a group one drive for hitting a horse seven times instead of six in either code is ridiculous. I don't think it comes down to the number anymore, but I, I, I exactly but, but know, also, I know re, where you're coming from. Reoffending, Greg, I agree, but yes. then again, reoffending means that doing it in a crap race in winter when you want to go on a holiday with your missus to the Gold Coast for a month and doing it a week out from the New Zealand Cup costs the same thing. Yeah. And it, <laughs> the worst thing about the rule is, Greg, it isn't going to change anybody's perception of racing. The days of clubbing is gone, as it absolutely should be. Should be. Yep, totally. But the difference between that and that is irrelevant. Yep. And until we get that through our thick noggins, we're going to end up costing ourselves money. And this isn't a harness racing issue. This is a galloping issue. We're all in this together. Someone, like with the rugby and the TMO, has to come up, Gregory, with a better idea because it's an entertainment product and our best players are in danger of not getting on the field. Yeah, correct. You just slipped that in there about the weekend, didn't you? Well, what did you make? Well, did you enjoy it? <laughs> state of origin. <laughs> no. State of origin, there's less rules. In bigger <laughs> rugby games, there's more rules. Yeah, no, I didn't enjoy it at all, Michael. But uh, what I am going to enjoy is what is ahead for us. I uh, can't wait to uh, get into the preview, particularly uh, on the Sunday of uh, Cup Day. Uh, like, like I said, Michael, the ticket sales are very, very good. You can get involved in some of the punters club for uh, Cup Week as well, knowing uh, what Rickerton are doing through Tim Mills and their team uh, out of Rickerton Park. If you haven't been to a New Zealand Cup week, Michael, what, what's the one message you would send to anyone, regardless of age, what would you say to them, what's the main reason they need to come to this carnival? Because the New Zealand Cup's the only harness race we have where the winner is remembered forever. We've got lots of great harness racing, the race by Grins is fantastic, Auckland Cup's great, the Dominion's great. It's the only race we have in harness racing, and there's not many gallops races either. The New Zealand Derby is the most obvious one, where the winner's name is remembered forever. Because you, you get to see history. You get to see it happening, and it's been happening since 1904. You should go and see it once in your life. If you've been once, you want to go back. I don't need to talk you into it the second time around. No, and you may well get an opportunity to see that hat get burned, Michael. Potentially. If you, if, if I'll make a deal. If you show footage recorded on your phone of yes. you taking that hat and dropping it into a clothes bin to go to people who need it more than you <laughs> I will donate $250 to Katie Cox's appeal. Right. If you have well, footage on the show next week of you chucking that hat away, no disrespect to Kaikoura but no mm. one should wear a red hat under any circumstances unless you play for the Kansas City Chiefs if you have that I will give $250 to Katie Cox's appeal next week but you must have I've written documented it down. footage I've written it down, people have seen it now Michael I'm in the, I'm there will be footage, there this will be good I will guarantee it. And what's worse is we're going to see someone who needs it far more than you wearing it round on Cup Day. And I'm going to yell out to them, <laughs> take that stupid hat off. <laughs> That's been your box seat for this week. Uh, we uh, probably should have a look at where Harness Racing, we're going to go around uh, New Zealand this week before we go. So here we have a look for you. Uh, Meffin, they do race on Wednesday, of course. We did have uh, that meeting uh, not abandoned, postponed uh, until then. Alexandra Park, they've got eight on Friday night, so, so Thursday night, so get involved in that. 5.40 the start time there. Addington have the two-year-old trotting stakes, $40,000 with SENZ at Group 3 level. Uh, they actually have 12 races now, 4.48 is the first of those. Uh, Invercargill on Sunday at 12.55. Been a lot of fun today, Michael. The things get really serious now, though. Looking forward to uh, your input over the next couple of weeks. Appreciate your time, though and uh, yep, we'll both be back in seven days' time. The Box Seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Harness Link, for all your worldwide harness racing coverage. Brecken Farms, New Zealand Bloodstock Standard Bread. IRT, it's your horse and our passion. Garrard's Horse and Hound. Lincoln Farms, Renwick Farms. Harness Racing New Zealand, the clubs Auckland, Cambridge, Addington and Ashburton and the TAB.